Hey, John. Good morning, everyone. Hi, Josh. Ooh. Hello, everyone. Christian Branch, mom. He said he was going to meet some people and he found out it was a board meeting. He's like, oh, no. Josh, he's so cute. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh my God, he's a cutie. <laughs> we miss you. Oh, I miss you guys too. Mm. And, oh, all right. We got him to meet people that it's like, all right, feeding time. Yeah, I know. You're Spider Man? Uh, Spider Man. I had to show up. Uh, one of our board members, Ken Catendell, I got him a nice Spider-Man onesie, and I want to be able to show off that we match together. Oh, buddy. Okay, okay. Smoke time. <laughs> I'm going to go on mute. Come on, Steve. Hey, Eugene. Good to hear your voice. All right. All right.
are we just really quiet or is the sound going in and out? I didn't think you wanted to hear him farting bad. Well, not, not just you. I didn't mean me. I'm using him as an excuse to cover up for me. That's all. <laughs> Josh, I love the matching outfits. Uh, Ken Candela hooked me up uh, right before he was born. I really appreciate it. Get a little spider verse going on here. It's good to see Spider-Man and Spider-Man Jr. How are you guys? Other than you're, you're scaring me. Um, Doing great. Amazing evidence of a splash hit here, Ken, thank you. You're welcome. I, I figured that would be the first father and son outfit, so. He's getting a little grumpy, I'm sorry. <laughs> I am going to ping Brandy, uh, Ken, so that we can get going. Hey guys, I uh, this is Dick. I uh, I'm got a had a quick little kid thing. My daughter's um, play, so I gotta go fast, and I'll be jumping on and jumping out. Completely understood. We're going to try to get started in the next two minutes, giving Shabbat and the first day of Ramadan. We want to be mindful of folks' time. Brandy, JB, are you on? Either of you? Well, it's 620. Um, I'm trying to, we'll, we'll take a, a roll call of just the, the, the current board members um, to confirm that we, we meet quorum. Uh, I am here. Janelle Charles, are you here? Present. Uh, Monica Chestnut, are you here? Present, yes. 
Ken Cantandela, are you here? Present. Peter Carey, are you here? Yes. John Reddick as a non-voting member, are you here? Yes. Uh, and here's Brandy trying to log in now. So let's give her a second. John Barrett, are you here? I'll take that as a no. Uh, Edward Robinson, are you here? And I will also take that as a no. Uh, I, I spoke to Edward. He has he's stuck on a plane at this current time, so I don't expect him. Let's give Brandy a second, and then we. Oh, I'm here. I, I had the wrong link, so. No worries. Just... Well, welcome, uh, Brandy. Do you wanna do you wanna call us to order? Um, I officially call this meeting to order. Apologies for the delay in my arrival. No worries. Um, we will. Uh, we sent around an agenda earlier. To, I think yesterday that some folks may have uh, been able to take a look at. Um, we're just gonna take through the items on our agenda. Um, and I'll ask Brandy to remind me if I forget something of uh, some item of Robert's rules. Um, but I do motion uh, to put forth uh, Kyle Haver, election of new board member. Um, Kyle was suggested to us or brought to us from uh, Dan and Aviva. So I'd like to uh, put forth a motion to elect Kyle to the Board of Trustees. Motion to make Kyle board member. Say that again, can I? I yeah, I made a motion to accept Carl uh, for election as a board member. Do you need a, you have a second if you need it. I have not seen any uh, CV or any other information related to him, uh, is that available? Yes. Let's see if we can pull it up. Does uh, any other member of the board have that readily available? Take a look. Give us a second while we pull that up. Dan and Aviva, I know you forwarded to us if you do have it handy. Or Kyle, I see you on the phone as well. If you could Yes, I can read forward to Peter right now. No problem. Peter, for context, Kyle was suggested or brought to us by Dan and Aviva and met with a, a number of people at the school, all, you know, giving, you know, high remarks and really raving about his candidacy. Have other members of the board met him? Met him excuse me. I, I, I certainly have, and I think Brandy has as well. That's correct. It, it was, I was very impressed. Has that come across yet for you, Peter? Pardon me? Has that has the CV and resume come across? Uh, I'm not, not to, should I I'll be looking at my email or is it going to come up on the screen? Uh, yes, your email. I just sent it. So it's to your email. So it's right there. Hopefully with the internet, it got there right now. <laughs> Also, if I may say, I had um, asked Dan and Aviva to contact Dr. Diaz at Sloan Kettering because he was interested in joining our board. He's also in charge of cancer research for children at Sloan Kettering. I think he would be a major asset for us. I think that some, con some initial conversation has been had or at least around putting us in contact um, definitely, you know, happy to speak with him in the next few days. We'd love to get him on the agenda for the next board meeting. Thank you so much because he asked because he just saw me on uh, Wednesday. 
Gotcha. Peter, did you receive that uh, information? I did. I did. I'm going through it now. Thank you. Just making sure you got it. That's all. Uh, he seems like a strong candidate to me. Okay, I, I move for a vote on his candidacy. I second that. So I'll take a tally of each of the current board members, uh, starting with myself. My current vote is yes. Janelle Charles, your vote? Yes. Monica Chestnut, your vote? Yes. Ken Cantandela, your vote? Yes. Peter Carey, your vote? Aye. And Brandy, your vote? Yes. Okay, having, having quorum in the sufficient amounts of yeses, uh, it's so elected that uh, Kyle Haver has been admitted to the board subject to approval by SUNY and the uh, state governance situation. Um, moving on to the next order of business is the election of chair and co-chair. Um, I do think uh, for austerity purposes, it may make sense for Brandy to bring this motion. Sure thing, should I just make a motion? Yeah, I, and then I'll yeah. motion to you. Okay, yeah, a little, little circle. Um, I make a motion. Um, to elect Naheem as board chair. I second that. This is Ken Catandella. Okay, and I ask, I'll ask each of the um, members to um, give their approval. So what's your vote, Ken? Yes. Um, I also ask um, Peter Carey. Uh, we yes. <laughs> um, it, it, we go, we go this way. Any objections? Should we got anybody? Any objections? Okay, everyone's in the affirmative. None. Okay, should we make it? You, can we? Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, it's so elected. Um, I motion to elect, uh, re-elect Brandilyn Dumas as co-chair of the Board of Trustees. Any objections? No objection. No. I think someone has to second, though, and it shouldn't be me. Second. Right, I'll, I'll repeat second. Are there any objections? No. Okay. Uh, moving forward on the committee elections, um, I motion to elect John Barrett as committee chair for the finance committee. Second. Any objections from the board? I have some concerns on that, but <laughs> I'm good to go. Perfect. Uh, moving forward to elections for members of the education committee. Uh, I motion to elect Janelle Charles as a member of the education committee. Um, I'm not sure if, if, if this is actually an election or appointment. Brandy, do you, do you know? Of I do know. You don't have to elect her. You, um, as board chair, you can just appoint her, but you can oh. have say it and so that it can be in the See, minutes. So uh, Janelle Charles has been appointed to the election committee, um, and so has Edward Robinson. Uh, we were going to... Uh, vote on uh, updating our uh, vote on a board of resolution, re board resolutions to update um, our term limits. And we were going to hear a, a brief presentation regarding the same from Edward Robinson, but unfortunately he's stuck on a flight. So with that said, we'll, we'll move forward and maybe we can circle back on this later. Um, at this time, we'll ask the, the school leadership team to give us an update. Um, 
especially if you can give us an update how you feel testing went this week. Hi, everyone. It's Aviva Duclair. I'm one of the principals at Harlem Link. It's great to see everyone. I just want to give a huge thank you to our staff who have worked a quite a busy week, um, who are here on a Friday night. I really just, I'm grateful and our whole community is grateful and shout out to our families who are on the call as well, who are maybe multitasking with their children, um, preparing dinner. So really appreciate our community members for showing up. Uh, I'm on behalf of myself and Dan and Doug and Raquel and Casina and Tyson wanted to give an update on what's happening at the school, a brief update. And, and Dan is on the call as well. He is uh, driving and so to be safe, he is not gonna jump on the call to speak up, but he is here somewhere on the screen. A um, couple of just updates, uh, just our team has been working really hard with our students across domains. We had our Black History Celebration earlier this month. I know LaTanya is on the call. Shout out to Miss LaTanya and our community for preparing our third, fourth, and fifth graders for a beautiful performance for those who were able to join us on Zoom. It was such a powerful performance and seeing our students come alive in another way, it's, it's an incredible thing. And a shout out to our entire team for preparing our students. We have been excitement around reading. We just did our recent uh, FMP analysis, and that'll come out of the education committee a little bit more in a few minutes, but there is so much growth to be proud of. Our students are resilient, persevering, and doing amazing work, and a shout out to our teachers for their commitment to supporting every child, providing access to their learning, especially in reading. Um, our students this week took the ELA test. There's a lot that has happened. That's the New York State ELA test, English language arts exam. And a third, fourth and fifth grade, uh, the feeling of the school was calm, was focused. Students were well prepared. It's our first time taking the exam, obviously, in a while since we've been in the pandemic. And a kudos shout out to our families for making sure that their child showed up on that day because we have very few makeups to do. So it's a big deal to make sure that every single child is there ready to go. And a, a huge thank you to the entire team for making it possible because it really is an all hands on deck experience for our students to be prepared for this exam and to take it successfully. Um, we recently had family teacher conferences. And so it was awesome for our families and teachers to have that checkpoint to interact and to, to talk about how things are going in our community. We have our lottery next week, which is exciting, talking about enrollment for the upcoming school year 2022 to 2023. And uh, shout out to the ops team and our entire recruitment team for really getting everything together and some really good swag that's Harlem Link on it. It's very exciting. Shout out to Rocky, Raquel for really spearheading that piece as well. Um, we're getting ready for our math state test. So we finished ELA, we're moving into math. And so math is coming up after our spring break. This year, spring break happens to fall a little bit beforehand. And so we come back and the math state test is on a Tuesday and a Wednesday. And so thank you again to our families for ensuring that their children are there for that test because it is important to take it with everybody as part of the community. We also, uh, last two things on our you know, planning side, we've launched strategic planning for next year for 2022, 2023. And so our admin team has really come together to be envisioning and checking in on what's next year and what's in store for our students and our community. And so it's a really exciting time for planning. And we've begun our SUNY renewal work. Next year is a big year for us as a community. And so we've begun that work and that planning and a lot more to come there, but it is exciting to be brainstorming and thinking about the growth and, and success of our community in the next five years. And so more to come there. Uh, that's the update from the school. Thank you. Uh, everything sounds good. Is there anything um, that the board can be doing in the short term, I guess, to support you guys from a planning perspective? I'm, I'm sure more will come, but uh, what can we be doing, you know, tomorrow, next week um, to get you guys, you know, whatever support you need? Yeah, um, I think uh, in our process, uh, as we begin the SUNY renewal work, I know that we'll be in touch closely around some key factors that we need to think about. One of the big questions that SUNY asks as part of the four main questions is, is our organization an effective and viable one? And that's a big piece and where the board will come in to making sure that you know we're all on the same page and, and we have some updates regarding support that we're getting to make sure that our SUNY 
renewal process is strong. And so we'll be in touch, I guess, in the next week or so with some updates for where the board will fit in because it's a huge part of the SUNY prep. And so we're excited to begin that process with the board and to share the latest that we have based on some meetings that we've had recently with SUNY and our consultants. Aviva, can you give us some more precise information on enrollment, how that's looking? Yeah, so we are currently, and Rocky is on the call, Rocky. Hey, Rocky, I see you down below. Um, so we are currently doing the lottery on Monday. And so Ra Raquel can share the exact stats there. And so, if, and I know it's gonna come up again in finance committee. So I'm not sure if we wanna talk about it now or then. And Nahi, maybe you can let us know what's best. Uh, let's, uh, Peter, if you don't mind, should we save it for the finance committee and we'll talk about it in that context? Sure. Great. Okay. Uh, any other questions from the board? Nope. Okay. Uh, let's move on to our education committee update. Um, Brandy, are you going to give it or is it Aviva? Um, so, so what I would like to do per discussion, Aviva, can you talk a little bit about the most recent data? Um, that you presented to me, and then I'll fill in any gaps because that was primarily our discussion in our last committee meeting. Yes, definitely. So um, at our recent education committee, um, when we met, we discussed a couple of key uh, data points. We discussed our FMP data, which is our reading data. And so three times a year, we do FMP analysis as a school-wide team. Uh, for kindergarten to fifth grade. So we discussed our reading data. We discussed ELA test prep data because we had a recent for third, fourth and fifth grade data to preparing for the test. We also discussed our mid-year class evaluations. We recently, given the pandemic with Omicron in December and January, we postponed uh, some of the evaluations. And so we moved it a little bit later. So our mid-year evaluation meetings happened more recently. So we discussed that data as well, uh, along with just general professional learning and opportunities that are going on at Harlem Link. And so some of the key data points that we talked about um, within our groups, uh, just to name a couple of exciting uh, data points for reading. Um, we, in grades one to five, and again, kindergarten is in a separate bucket, uh, we talked about how we had 120 students that were in tier three in November and now 82. And so tier three, when we talk about our model of learning, we think about things in tier one, tier two, tier three. Tier one is uh, on grade level, tier two, some support, and tier three, needing the most support. And so we've made that tier three smaller. As we know this year, given the pandemic, we've been really working hard to support, especially our first, second, and third graders with some of those gaps in reading. And so we're seeing a decrease of that tier three and an increase of students who have moved in tier one and tier two. Um, and across the board, we have um, in special education and supporting our students and multilingual learners as well. We've seen that increase of students who have more access. We had from multilingual learners, 23 students who were in tier three and now just 10, which is really exciting. And from special education, we had 37 students and now 32. And so across the board, we're seeing growth in reading. And in our um, test prep data, the, the quiz cycles that we recently did, um, we had low percentage passing points at that point for third, fourth, and fifth grade, which again, it would be expected given the pandemic and this time of year. And so, you know, it was important data for us to be looking at and teachers were looking at data closely all along during the test prep cycles. Um, but when we get the scores, you know, in August, September, when the state releases the scores, we'll be able to analyze the data and SUNY has told us that the ELA and math scores from this year are likely baseline, but they might not be depending on the circumstances of where the state scores land given the pandemic circumstances of this year and past years. Yeah, so, so and one of the things that we also discuss and, and thank you Aviva, that's very helpful is taking these sort of interim wins in terms of the, the positive trajectory and making sure that we're anchoring them in our narrative for our renewal. So we'll continue to sort of work collectively with respect to that, um, both sort of checking in, but also making sure that we're most effectively interpreting our wins um, through the lens of our culture as we, as we present our case for renewal. Perfect, it sounds like we're, we're trending in the right direction. It sounds like all things are- We are. And then, you know, I think one of the things that we should think about 
Um, and this is something that we discussed in the Ed Committee meeting and, and will be on the agenda for the next meeting is for taking the lessons learned from this year and thinking critically about summer and, and how we might um, use that as an effective time in the planning around that. And that's all that I have. Okay, great. Um, moving to the Finance Committee, Doug, are you on? I know he said he had to hop on and hop off. We'll uh, circle back uh, to him in a bit. Uh, Ken, uh, can you update us on the development? Yes. So. Um, sorry. Hey. Um, oh, JB. Sorry, yes. Go ahead, JB. Yeah. Just on. Sorry, you had questions on finance committee. Uh, just a general update, uh, Doug. Yeah, I mean, in, in general, th things are okay. Uh, there's been some some attrition on uh, on some staff members, which we are not going to replace. Uh, we uh, the the medical costs are coming in better than expected, so that's good. But but uh, you know, enrollment uh, is an issue, and what's the concern is that our lottery numbers are not looking good either, and so I don't see a path. <laughs> To, for those enrollment numbers to go up meaningfully at all for next year, unless so, uh, unless someone needs to mute. Made. There's a lot of background chatter. I'm having a hard time following That's what's being said. Someone needs to okay. mute. Okay, that unfortunately it's it, it's me. I uh, just at my, my my son's baseball game, but I'm stepping away. So okay, the enrollment's the biggest problem. The lottery numbers are not particularly robust. And so it seems that our role for next year is going to continue to be under pressure. We, uh, and so that's just a lot of concern. As far as this year, the, the enrollment has been enough to, to slowly, uh, to offset uh, attrition and to slowly build our enrollment numbers. So now we're in the low 380s. Uh, but we, again, we need to be adding aggressively uh, by by going to people proactively who are on the on the list, the the lottery list for the higher grade, and we got to go really hard for our kindergarten because as of now, based on prior statistics, I don't believe our kind kindergarten class is going to be full next year, and that is years and years of ongoing impact. Okay. Uh, that being said, we have a lot of cash on our in our bank accounts, and we did not have any looming issues in front of us. Okay, that's good to hear. Um, we'll still leave time for Doug to, if he jumps back on to add to that. Um, but we'll move on to, to Ken and the Development Committee. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm, I'm partly filling in for uh, Mr. Josh, who has uh, uh, got his hands full on paternity leave with baby Gio. Um, and um, by all means, Pete, Marianne, um, I'm not sure who else is on the call, please jump in. Um, plans are underway. At this point, we are in uh, better shape than we were last year in terms of fundraising. We still have a spring appeal and an end of year appeal to come. Um, we have had initial conversations about a graduation speaker and uh, at our uh, development Committee meeting next week, uh, which Dan and Aviva will be attending. We can talk about strategy around a visit for a graduation speaker. Um, we will also uh, be reviving the very successful um, uh, cocktail social fundraiser, um, particularly uh, looking to uh, attract a, a younger group of um, young professionals, uh, as well as working with businesses in the neighborhood. Um, and so that is, those are some of the things that uh, are on our um, radar. Uh, as of today, uh, the Columbia University uh, chapter of the Roosevelt Network reached out. I don't know if any of you are familiar with the Roosevelt Network, but they want to talk with um, the school about doing uh, teach-ins at uh, Harlem Lake. And so that would be yet another connection to uh, the community. And finally, um, we are in the queue. Once BioBus begins um, visits 
again, uh, probably not until next, well, it will not be until next fall, but uh, we are locked in for two visits so that all of our students will have an opportunity um, to spend time on the bio bus. Ken, can you talk a little bit um, about what the bio bus is, just for the folks who may not you know, be aware of? I'm probably the, the worst person <laughs> to tell you about what the bio bus. Um, I'm gonna open it up to any of our teachers who uh, have visited the bus with their students. I think Jen's on the call. Miss Jen, are oh, you is on it great? Call? Yeah, I'm on the call. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Okay, so the bio bus is like a biology bus. It's a moving science laboratory that goes from schools to school and it shows our students of our age level how to use a microscope what you see in a microscope uh, what a microscope looks like they learn about the body parts of these little microscopic things called daphnia um, and uh, they do worksheets and they travel all over the city and we've been very very fortunate uh, prior to COVID to being able to have every single student in the school go on the bus which has been a really great experience um, and the kids they love it like we I had a, a student a couple of days ago just asking to go back on it and I think the last time they were on it was in pre-k so it was like three years prior. So there's things they remember the experience and getting on it. And um, it's just, a it, it's very, it, it becomes much more advanced for the grades when you move up, but for our grade level, that's the basics of what it, what it is. Any other questions? <laughs> no, I think that was perfect. Um, I just wanted to, just to make sure everyone was on the same page. Um, Ken, uh, we can also talk about the uh, mixer coming up. Um, I'm not sure if we want to make sure that that event is held in Harlem or not. Um, I would love to host the group, the community, and my restaurant, which is downtown, but um, would love to host you by everyone around. So it'd be great. All right. Well, we will take you up on that, Mr. Harris. No, no worries there. No problem. Uh, moving off agenda for a second. Um, I'm going to ask, and this is a little bit, uh, they don't know that I'm going to ask them this. I'm going to ask each of the new board members to just give us 10 seconds, 20 seconds, introduce yourself to the community. I know you guys had the chance to meet with some of the folks, um, but given, you know, it's a great opportunity to, to talk to the broader community, 20 seconds. Ken, I'll ask you to reintroduce yourself. Same, same with you, Monica. And then uh, Kyle, um, I think we should you know, do the same for you, if you don't mind. Okay, well, um, it's kind of strange to be a new board member, uh, considering I, I think I was on the board uh, first time around. Uh, Marianne would know best because she recruited me in the middle of Sixth Avenue. Um, but uh, I'm uh, at Columbia University. I oversee the university's alumni association and university relations. Um, and uh, people like Aviva crossed, have crossed my path on campus many times. Um, one of the things, the way I got involved was uh, every year, uh, fifth grade scholars come to Columbia uh, to learn about being an alum, because that is one of the hallmarks of what Harlem Links ethos is all about. And um, our hope is that we will be able to do it uh, at the end of this year uh, as campus is opening up. Uh, so it is, um, you know, unfortunately, my time is not as uh, uh, bountiful as it was in the past, but uh, I uh, felt the need to uh, come back and uh, be part of this. And uh, I've been on the development committee uh, for all that time and um, at one point in time was uh, coaching along with Grant. So that's me. Thank you for that, um, Monica or Janelle. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Monica Chesla, and I am a parent of Harlem Link. I have a fourth grader right now, and I have an alum who just graduated last year who had been there since kindergarten. Um, so I've been in the Harlem Link family for quite some time now. I came on as a non-voting member of the board about four years ago now. 
as the president of the PTA at Harlem Lee to help us. Um, and I'm here, I've been here for some years, like I said, and I also work with the intellectual and developmental disabled population. So I bring some of that as well. Thank you for that. And uh, Janelle? Hi, everyone. My name is Janelle Charles. And I'm a, one of the new board members. And currently, I serve as director of enrollment at Lycée Français de New York, which is an independent nursery through grade 12 school on the Upper East Side with a bilingual French American program. Um, previously, I spent 10 years in the classroom as a French and Spanish language teacher to students in both public and independent schools from kindergarten through grade 12. Um, and I'm just excited to be able to support Harlem Link in their enrollment challenges as that is what I do day to day. Thank you for that and welcome. And hopefully soon to be uh, board member Kyle Haber, if you don't mind sharing a few minutes or a few moments. Sure, can everyone hear me? Yes. So uh, thank you. My name is Kyle Haver. Uh, briefly, I've 30 plus years working in the New York City Department of Education. I retired a few years ago. I served my role as a teacher, classroom teacher, teacher, uh, staff developer, principal, director of professional learning at, at two different school districts and at central headquarters as, as a senior instructional manager uh, with a focus on social studies and in literacy. I've got a great deal of experience as a leadership coach. I'm an arts advocate believe deeply in arts education and have worked internationally as well as with several charter schools here in the city. Thank you for that. And I'm excited to have you, your, your, your background is immense. And I hope at the end of my career, I can, you know, give a resume like that or a rundown like that. So um, welcome in advance. I uh, want to open the floor to Doug or uh, Edward if they've joined, if not, we're going to move to our um, update on community engagement, um, which I'm sure a lot of you are, are anxious to hear. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a, a huge update to give. Um, we are um, still working through um, the process of moving forward with our former school leaders. I think we are making good progress. Um, Steve and Margaret are on the phone so they can chime in if they disagree. Uh, Steve and I had a pretty productive conversation today and I think we've set forth a roadmap um, to how you know, all parties involved can move forward and how we can resolve any um, outstanding open issues. As for um, the petition that was delivered back in February, um, the, the first part of the petition is related to what I just spoke about um, around Steve and Margaret's uh, time at the school. I cannot really uh, comment on that given the uh, you know, threatened litigation and the existing cease and desist letter. Uh, I hope the plan is the, that by the next board meeting uh, that would be resolved. Um, like I mentioned, we do have a roadmap that uh, you know, at least puts a process of how we get there. Now the question of whether we get there in time for the next meeting uh, is up to the parties involved. Um, as for another portion of the uh, petition, um, the, the, the Harlem Link Community Ambassadors had some very specific requests around board development. Um, we did add every uh, new or returning board member has been vetted by select members from the community and the staff. Uh, we've also, uh, with the uh, addition of Kyle Haver, We've also um, added someone that was a direct uh, recommendation from uh, the staff by way of the, uh, the community, by way of the staff. Um, we also voted in Monica Chestnut as a fully voting member. Um, I think the plan is that the going forward that the president of the PTA will automatically be a voting member of the board. Um, and then going, you know, feel free to suggest other parents and we will vet and interview them um, in due course like we do other board members. Um, the plan is to receive new training and our uh, new governance uh, and board governance, but that's not gonna happen um, until likely the end of the year when we have our uh, annual board development meeting. 
um, that's the, the current plan for that. Um, and okay. Um, hey, uh, so Naheem, it's okay if I, uh, if I respond. Uh, sure. Yeah, I, I actually really enjoyed talking with you today. I appreciate the times, the first time we had a chance to talk in a couple of months. And um, it was good to have um, some positive conversation. Uh, I would just add on, and I would disagree with anything you said, but I would add on that we still have some pretty significant differences in views about some things, especially around transparency and um, process and, um, you know, what the pathway is to resolve what, what happened. So, um, you know, I, I will tell you that I don't feel good at this time um, about uh, what's going on. And uh, I don't see whether I don't feel confident that we're going to get answers. So uh, I'm, I'm willing to continue to engage and try, but uh, we have some pretty serious disagreements about basic facts that, um, you know, concern me. Um, I appreciate all the volunteers uh, doing the work, uh, but I, you know, I just have to add that in. Understood and, uh, and, uh, and appreciate it. I don't think we're going to get resolution on the facts in, in some ways, right? I think there's a, a certain amount we're just going to have to agree to disagree on certain things. But um, rather than litigate those facts here, um, I do think uh, we do have a few minutes that we want to open the floor to folks from the community for just a minute or so each, um, just to, you know, we want to. Sorry about that. Um, sorry about that. I have a uh, 18 month old puppy. Um, we do want to open the floor for a minute or so each. Just um, want to keep the uh, community engagement aspect of this meeting to the extent we can. Um, also, we want to apologize for moving the meeting. We had a, a mishap on our calendars. Some of the board thought the meeting was on Monday. The other board thought, the other half thought the meeting was on Tuesday. So we had to move the meeting. And unfortunately, this was the first day that worked um, for the, the members of the board. Uh, with that being said, um, I, I'll ask people to either raise their hand and I'll do my best to, to call folks as I see them. Oh. Um, and however, I just want to keep in mind that not everyone's gonna have a chance to speak. We're, we're not gonna do this for hours. I know today's um, first day of Ramadan and Shabbat's coming. So we wanna be mindful of those members of our community. Uh, Mr. Johnson, I see you first. Absolutely. Uh, I'm gonna try to keep this as brief as I possibly can. Before I do that, for all the Muslim members on here, I'll say assalamu alaikum and Ramadan Kareem. I don't know too much about you, but, but look, I have to be very frank. I am very concerned about the process. It feels like this ship has been hijacked. There, there are decisions being made, but they aren't actually decisions because these things are like, okay, well, we'll put this person here, we'll put this person here, and this is all you have to choose from. Brother, I spoke with you personally, and you said, don't worry, Mr. Johnson. We're going to right the ship. We're going to right the course of the ship. But no one knows where the ship went off course. You keep saying that there's this cease and desist. My understanding is the cease and desist refers to slanderous statements. If you have clear evidence of wrongdoing, you can share that. Please don't lawyer me to death, man. I'm, I'm not stupid. I'm not stupid and I'm trying to be very calm. You cannot do nothing with the community if you are not willing to talk to the community. We have no answers. And for the past two months, there have been stallings. Oh, I can't do this because there's a cease and desist but you weren't giving any answers even before the cease and desist came into play. Now, if we're all acting as a community and the ship is off course and we genuinely want to get back on course, you got to tell us what's going on. If it is not a lie, you can speak on it. 
the people involved themselves told you, listen, man, if you have any wrongdoing against us, you can share it with the people. The cease and desist refers to slanderous statements, things that are not true. The things that are true, you can share with the people. I'm also concerned with the fact that there are no minutes. We can't even get minutes from these meetings and they're open meetings and you must provide that. You Which must. ones are you missing minutes for? Uh, we went We're back missing back. minutes for December of 21, January of 22, and February of 22. I think that Those are public record. Us. We do not them. have them. We do not have them. They're not even posted on the Harlem Link website. And I find that quite strange. Another thing that's kind of um, intriguing to me is that when this all started, when we all had that little seven hour thing in January, and you said that you had Ms. Voika step down or whatever, you, you've taken a leadership role from the very beginning. You told us that you were taking this seat. It feels as though this seat has been hijacked. And I mean, I'm saying that very respectfully. It Which, feels and, and as I want though... to stop. I'm going to, if I can jump in, I want to remind everyone, this is a volunteer role, right? And when this meeting is over, I'm going back to work. I, I want to mm -hmm. keep that in mind. I'm not hijacking this. I would love for someone who had the time, for someone who didn't work 80 hours and 90 hours a week, who had mm -hmm. the time, to do this, to take on this role. Um, I just wanna make it clear, right? Um, because if we don't enter into discourse, what you're gonna, what you're gonna say is gonna be taken as fact, right? Um, another thing- well, actually is, what you said was taken as fact. And, 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 and there has and, not been any evidence presented to anyone. We're still in the dark. When it seems as, oh, it and I resolved. also want you to know, I'm mm -hmm. not being coerced mm -hmm. by anyone to speak what I feel. Mm -hmm. I have enough sense. I have a little bit of intelligence and I can speak on my own. Absolutely. I am and under I, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sure under the spell that. of no syndrome other than truth and transparency. And no one has shown the community truth and transparency. The process a, is broken and someone plan. needs to speak to that. You there keep saying a there's a plan. I'm sure there was a plan. There's a plan from the that. moment you guys started this, but we are not privy to the plan. And you keep telling us that you can't say this and you can't say that and you can't say the third. There's I find that to be place. very disingenuous. And man. I spoke today with Steve and outlined the plan in which we can get to a place where we can uh, communicate that to the community. Um, we will continue to discuss that and resolve that with Steve. And once we have that resolution, we are willing to share it with the community. That, that's all I can say, right? I understand what you're so asking So we're going to make the moves. We're going to do what we do. And then we'll... No, I cannot the board the is not the community. It's not the school. Lawsuit. I just, and I'm going to create a uh, worst case scenario, right? A worst case scenario, right? And would be, I disclosed information regarding someone's termination that I was not supposed to disclose by law, right? The other person who was terminated brings suit. That money doesn't come from my pocket. It doesn't come from your pocket. It doesn't come from Steve and Margaret's pocket. It comes from a line item on our budget. And as a state fiduciary, I'm obligated to protect that line item on our budget, right? Wow. That's where my obligation lies. Right, and I can't. I, I don't have much more to tell you now. So, are you going to keep telling us that, man? Are you, you going to? How okay, long are you going to do that, that for us, man? How How long are you going to do that to us? Until we reach. I mean, you you waited till the very last moment to even respond to our concerns, and you haven't really responded to the concerns. Uh, I'm you waited till sure the very that, last but... moment. I'm not sure exactly what you're okay. referring to. Okay, I'm gonna ask you a very simple question. Mm -hmm. How was the ship off course, brother? How do we correct the course of the ship if we don't even know how it's off course? Mm -hmm. Unless that's something that you've decided that you're gonna do mm -hmm. on your own and then present it to the people. Mm -hmm. How is the ship off course? Yeah. 
The ship is off course because the trust of the board is broken. We've taken your suggestions that you've made into board governance. The trust we, of the board is has been uh, broken yes. because of the process, okay. because of the way you guys. Did I'm, it. I'm answering the question, and I'm, and I okay. hope to answer this question and then move on to leave room for everyone else. Um, the trust of the board is broken um, because of some of the things that happened leading up to what happened. What happened? Uh, what, what happened? What happened leading up to what the happened? War? Yes, some what of happened? The that happened? We waited right? long enough, man. The people involved Some of the things, have said. Are you said, going to let me finish, Mr. Johnson? A sentence. Okay. Some of the things that happened were there was a loss. Uh, you you lost the you lost trust in the board, right? Because the process around removing the school of the, the school leaders was broken. It was done in it, secrecy. It, it did not. It did not provide for transparency. It did not provide for community input, right? So the first thing Absolutely. we're going to do once we're able to speak freely about it, right? Is engage the community on an ongoing process, right? And I understand that you don't believe that we, I, I actually I mean, you, I understand you that you did what you did in secrecy. And right? after, but that is after what, we that is the number take one all thing. this time, the people are gone are and you? there's no appetite for the reinstatement of these people, you understand? Mm -hmm. And you are in a position where you can continue to make the same moves that you made on January twentieth. I, I didn't. I How actually do we didn't hear know that it's going to be different? I, I, I didn't hear what you were saying. Why didn't you hear what I was saying? Were you, you were not listening for me. That's why. Were you not listening? Uh, you were speaking over me. But um, I, I think we probably reached an impasse on this conversation, uh, Mr. Johnson. You have my phone number. Always open to talk more. No, don't, um, don't say that, brother. I, I am, and I, and I mean that sincerely. I mean, no, I honestly don't say that, brother. Um, feel free to shoot me a text. We're going to schedule some time, of course. Um, Again? Is there anyone else in the community? Uh, David White, I see your, your hand. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hello, can you, uh, thank you very much. I, my name is David White. I'm the manager of data and accountability at Charter Harlem Link Charter School. The bulk of my work revolves around academics, so I just wanted to speak briefly in support of the co-principals who are doing an amazing job, uh, who have shown tremendous leadership and flexibility in very trying times, and uh, they have a very compelling vision for the school, and I'm really excited to be a part of that going forward, and I really think uh, academics are in excellent hands with our co-principals. So I just want to speak briefly in support of them. And David, thank you for that. And I think the board fully agrees. Hello, uh, Mr. Harris. My name is Nicole Sapp. Can you hear me? Yep. I'm sorry, I'm a little nasally, so bear with me. Well, you sound great. Um, <laughs> one of the things that I'd like to know um, is in terms of the staff, because you're saying that you don't currently have an ability to discuss uh, the concerns of the community's petition, to discuss anything surrounding removal of the former co-founders, how do we protect the staff and assure the staff that their jobs are not in jeopardy, that, you know, they, they should not be a loss of staff retention, or that there's not gonna be consistency going forward. We have no intention to remove any staff members. That's not the board's role. We don't come, we don't chime in on those staff level decisions. Um, we chime in on the very executive decisions, but staff is um, up to the school leaders or Dan and Aviva. Um, that's who we have our support. That's who we intend to be our school leaders next year. Um, and that is what I can offer now. If, the, if there's something else specifically, right, that would um, give the staff more comfort in that regards, um, I'd love to hear it. I'd love to have a conversation about it. And just to confirm the last thing that you said when Mr. Johnson was speaking in terms of addressing our petition, you're stating that you guys are gonna be working with 
um, Stephen before you can release any information to the public before you can even address any of the concerns of the petition. Is that what you're saying? Like there's we nothing- address some of the concerns. We address, I think, num item two in the petition around board development and uh, electing members to the board. I think we've aligned ourselves with that process. Um, as for matters related uh, directly to one's employment, we will first confer with that person. And once we reach a resolution with that person, we'll disclose details um, at that time. But what about due process going forward for additional staff and for, making sure that every, mm -hmm. everything is fair and just, that there is a process established mm -hmm. going forward so that there is not such a lack of transparency when these types of decisions are made? Mm -hmm. Is there, I would love to have a conversation about that, right? But uh, I think uh, if I just implemented a due process uh, process, that would just be me implementing a due process process and it'd be, you'd have the same complaints that you have now, rightfully. Um, but it, those are things we can look at, um, but there's not, those are not, that's not something we can do retroactively really. Um, but like I mentioned, open to those conversations, um, not really in a position where I can like promise you like, hey, that's hundred percent gonna happen or that's not gonna happen. Um, but uh, I am willing to discuss that um, I'm willing to make sure you have my email address and my phone number, and we can figure out the time to discuss as well. Is there any other person who would like to speak here? I think I see Sonia yeah. Clark. Hi, Ms. Clark. Did you yeah. want to speak? Yes, hi. I, I didn't know she's going to come back on. <laughs> so I was just trying to make sure. I'm just confused about a lot of things. I'm sorry, I have a toddler. Um, no need to apologize. I'm just, I'm just confused about a lot of things. I feel like the termination of the founders were, were most definitely unjust. And we still don't have any clarity into what happened and why it's like that. Um, and then there's no transparency of what's going on. I feel like everything has just been so closed off on a lot of the decisions that were made. And when will the community know what's going on and how can the people that started this not be the right people for this? I don't understand. Like it's their vision that will be used moving forward. So how can you guys use their vision without the visioners? Ugh. I'm, I'm a bit confused. So can I Thank have you for that? Um, I think um, Good when you question. build something great, it outlives you. Um, and that's, I think, the, the quick and dirty answer to that. Um, but like I mentioned earlier, just to reiterate, uh, we do have a plan for transparency and disclosing that information, but we will do so in a way that protects the school as best we can. Uh, Ms. Mota, am I saying that correctly? Yes, you are. I'm sorry. Um, I'm a first time parent for um, Harlan Link. Um, I do have a sibling. Um, she's one of the teachers. Um, but aside from being that, um, the experience that I have had so far, it has been really good when it comes to the turns to Mr. Dan, um, answering all of my questions and, and reaching out to me and getting back to me. Um, I do have to say that the last board meeting, I did find it to be completely unprofessional. And from my line of work, I'm a social worker and it was just like so many things that were kind of how everything went about when informing parents and, and even during the board meeting, so many things that it took like two, three hours. Like I literally stayed in that meeting until the very, very last minute. Um, just because I am very invested in my daughter's um, education and seeing what type of um, culture she is receiving while she's in school. Because of course, you know, I'm at work and she's in the school. I, I, I wouldn't know that. Um, but I do love the, the Harlan Link staff. The, uh, you know, they are very great. They are very amazing. They support my daughter. Um, even the teacher, um, I have learned that my daughter is a little more excelled than her other classmates and, and, and the teachers have reached out to me 
and said, you know, and given me suggestion on, on other things that I could do to continue encouraging my daughter and she, kind of challenging her to do better work while they still work in the classroom. So I just want to say like, you know, the staff is great. They, they are amazing. So that's all I have to say. Appreciate Thank that. you for giving me the time. And I'm sorry, why do we have to wait so long for, for the information that, we, that led up to the, the termination when it's already been made public? Why do, why do we have to wait? It has not been made public yet, or I hope it hasn't. Um, oh, with the, the, the concern now is that there are certain privileges, um, certain confidence that we need to keep when things are made and when decisions are made in certain ways. Um, also, we need to protect the school, um, meaning that uh, we can't leave a door open for someone to sue the school. Um, and, and I don't say that to suggest that uh, Steve and Margaret did you say school. Was school. What did you However, um, as fiduciaries, we have to prepare for the worst case scenario. Okay. And in doing so, that's what we're doing. So the community doesn't have a say so in who we want to lead the school that we all agreed to. Their vision is the reason why all of us are here. We're not here because Harlem Link is Harlem Link. We're here because they created that, that foundation. They created that vision. They created mm -hmm. everything that our children are receiving right now. So I, I'm, just, I'm just not getting it. I'm just I think not- there's sometimes that. where what the obligations of the board are gonna rub or come against what the wants of the community are and what we're doing now. Um, and, and I mean, we collectively, board, community, are figuring out how to marry or how to deal with those instances, right? Where, and this is the first time like we've ever had to deal with this, right? Where the desires of the board actually conflict with what the stated desires of the community are, right? And I think an organization, this is a growth point for an organization where we get to work together to figure out exactly how we deal with this. Um, in order to do that though, right? We need to do that in a way, like I mentioned before, that's protective of the institution. Harlem Link is bigger than everyone on this community, everyone on this phone um, as individuals, but it's not bigger than everyone on this phone as a collective. And how do we protect that? Um, and that's what we're trying to do. Um, and I don't want to make it seem over adversarial by continuing to say protect. Like, I don't think that the school is under attack. Um, but I do want to um, make sure that folks understand the, 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 the way we're looking at it. I want to make sure that folks understand the way we're thinking about it. Um, and I, I, listen, I don't expect you guys to stop joining board meetings. I don't expect these um, questions to stop happening. I fully expect Definitely. to have this conversation with Mr. Johnson every month um, until we're able to give him an answer, right? And that's my Absolutely. full expectation. Um, but at that when at the moment we are able to, we will I will run to it. So this All way I, I can, ask. Right? And when we are able to, I will run to you, I will call you first. All um, I ask is that you remember that Harlem Link, the institution is not bigger than the future of our children. Absolutely. That's right. the um, biggest thing there. Understand. Right now, the trust but is. I understand so it, but I do, I do want to give two people who haven't had the chance to speak yet. Um, Miss Angeles. Yes, hello. I'm, I'm a parent at Harlan Link. My daughter um, is in fourth grade, and um, I was in the previous meeting. And um, I, I never had any complaints with Harlan Link. It's a great school, but my daughter basically is traumatized by what happened because my daughter go to school there and her classmate is Poppy. And my daughter he used to miss the Evangelista. And um, I think it's Miss Margot. Um, the, 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 the workers that was fired, she knows them personally. I had pre, I had troubles before with school, with Success Academy, I call Harlan Link, 
and Miss Marie opened her door to me, made me feel comfortable in the pandemic. The way the way they had the plan set up, it was it made me feel comfortable, and I was going through a very rough time. And my daughter knows that something is going on with her with her friend parents because Harlan Link is a family. And everybody, you know, when the vaccination, they personally was helping me. The principal um, on hands one on one, communicating with us. The things that you guys did, it was not nice because I usually I did it at first. I didn't know what the meeting was about, and I, I respond to the email that I get to the school right away because I'm very involved in my daughter's education. And when I opened that and I went to the meeting, I was with my daughter because we usually participate together. And when they're talking about Mr. Bajelista is being fired, that is not going to be there. My daughter was worrying about that. And she's worrying about her friend, her, her classmate too. So the way you guys did that, it was very unprofessional. And I didn't have no complaint or concern about the school. But now I do have a concern because it's the way you're speaking, it sounds a little arrogant because we they are asking you questions about these people, what is going to happen. We are family, we are concerned. How you could protect in the institution if you're not protecting the student? Remember, our students are the institution. And you guys did not protect it when you guys made that decision like that. You know, that's, that's not nice. Today, my daughter came in today. We talk every time she comes from yeah. school. And my daughter told me, um, you know, reminded me that Miss Evangelista, I don't know, I've never been inside to the school, but she's telling me that she always looking forward to see puppies on parents that their office is by the cafeteria. I don't know if they write, you probably, you guys probably know if my daughter is telling me the truth, but it was not nice what you guys did to Mr. Steve and Mr. Margaret. It was not nice. And I would like to see them there because they are very helpful. I'm, very re I'm getting ready to move um, to another house and I'm still wanting to keep my daughter in this school because my daughter is the youngest student in the school. And she's just six years old in first grade and their teachers are great even during the pandemic. You understand? So you guys got to do better when it comes to communication because you guys just to protect the corporation, you guys can expose your student the way you guys see. Thank you. Well, thank you. We appreciate that. And I think um, a lot of our goals going forward will address a lot of your concerns. Ms. Burrito? Hi, good afternoon, everybody. First of all, I want to thank everybody who is uh, part of the board members of the VA. I really, we really appreciate your time and thank you for meeting with us. Uh, I'm very concerned. I really think um, I would like to know how the board is going to make, is gonna, can ensure the parents that our kids are going to continue to receive the same quality of education that they are receiving right now. Uh, I also would like to know what the future holds because um, with COVID, everything, I, I think it has teach all of us that the future is just uncertain. I understand that we can plan, but also we, we need to know. I personally have my two boys in the school, but I also have my niece and my nephew, who is in a total of four, child, of four children in there that uh, if the things continue like this and we don't get clarity on any on anything or everything is just like, okay, we're gonna give it up more time, we're gonna give it up more time, it's just doesn't make sense. So it's really making me and my brother looking for another school at this point because we don't know what the future is gonna be like with our kids and how the board is going or is going or is planning or it has a plan in place or whatever to really uh, change the school. If we don't, if we are not clear about this, then how are we gonna keep our kids in the school? Thank you for that. And I think you asked like some really relevant questions. And I think the, the quick and dirty answer to that is that um, we're entrusting 
members who are already in the community with the future of the school. Uh, we think Dan and Aviva are fully capable of running the school and continuing to provide the education in the environment that you've come to love. Uh, we don't think there'll be any um, uh, change to the spirit of the school. We think um, that uh, your, 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 your children continue to be in, in good hands. Um, Marianne, I think you were the next hand that I saw. Hi, thank you. Oh. I'm sorry, Ms. Maria. How are you? Hi, good, <laughs> good. Um, I'm sorry. Just let me say one more thing. I also would like to address the fact that um, that we are speaking for the records. We are speaking for ourselves. We know what to say and how to deal with it. We are capable of seeing things. We are capable of think and see what is wrong and, where, and what is right for our kids. And we're here to advocate for them. And we go to the end of this because we need answers. We need answers to our questions. We're here to fight for our kids' education. And that's at the end of the day, who's gonna really be suffering all the consequences of our actions as adults. And I think we need to start thinking about that. Then they should be our priority, not only for, our, for the parents, but also for the board. Absolutely. And I, we try to make decisions with students first. We try not to make decisions around adults. Um, you, I, I, I am going to circle back to you, Ms. Brito, if I'm saying it correctly. You, you, you mentioned something that I thought was very interesting. You're the second person to suggest it. Um, you, suggest, you, you, you kind of reiterated and kind of uh, really focused on the fact that you're speaking for yourself. Um, and, and, and the question I'll ask for you, and we'll circle back, is um, has someone suggested that parents are not speaking for themselves. Um, and, and that that question, I'll, I'll just leave with you for the moment. And, and, and all the I, can, I, I can answer that if that's okay, Naheem. Uh, uh, is that all right? Let me, fin let me finish and then, sure. and then you can jump in. Um, but the reason I ask is, you know, I wouldn't just ask you, I, I just heard it a few times and, and that's why I, I'm asking. Um, the school's lawyer told my lawyer that I was inciting parents. And I, I didn't even know what to say about that. That was a while back. I haven't been inciting parents. And I, I felt really bad about that. So I wanted to tell parents, I've probably spoken to many of the people on this call who've come up to me or approached me and said, I, I want you to know that I'm not putting anything in your mouth to say it's your school. You decide. And, um, you know, I felt personally insulted by that. Not, not that, you know, questioning my integrity or something. I, I'm not insulted about that. But the notion that our families who elected to come to the school would not take a proactive stance and advocate for their child, whatever their views are, disagree with me, agree with me, whatever. Um, I, I've took a personal affront to that statement from the school's lawyer. Uh, to say that to my lawyer when uh, we reached out to try to, you know, start the pathway that you had mentioned that we're trying to get to. So that's probably where that's coming from. Gotcha. Understood and appreciated. And I'm sorry that you feel that way. And uh, I'm sorry that that was communicated to you in that way. Um, it's certainly not how I feel. Um, Miss Marianne? Yes. Hey. Um, I'm director of the Start to Finish program and a parent of a kindergartner. Um, and I just did want to confirm for everybody that, you know, the, the programming at the school and the kids' experience has um, been very, very strong. The, um, yeah, the Black History Month, they just a performance. I want to give another shout out. I, I saw them practicing on the fourth floor for months and really just um, really shined. Um, the most recent class of Harlem Link graduates, um, HL 14, 77% um, of them are enrolled in their second semester of college, which is 11 points, uh, percentage points above um, the national average. Um, there's just a lot of impressive things going on. The fifth graders all completed the um, their middle school applications for the DOE and today charter. Um, and yeah, my, my son's teachers are incredible. Um, I just really want to urge expediency for the board and all members involved in 
uh, coming to a resolution and being able to talk to this. Um, we've done all this in spite of this like open wound <laughs> that has been very painful um, the past two months and we really need healing. And so please, <laughs> if feels like there has, I know that there's been a lot of elements at play, um, but please, please do all that you can to um, address and um, come to a point where we can be transparent and we can know what's going on um, because it, it is, does feel like every day we're walking around with an open wound um, trying to like, I don't know, put band-aids on situations that really need uh, healing and reconciliation and coming to all parts together, coming together, um, especially as we're talking about enrollment. Um, I've had, you know, alumni parents come saying, I was, I'm suggesting all these people like to enroll, but I, I don't feel confident with that right now. Um, so, and like staff contracts are coming out. Um, and I know that like we're committed, but like, I just urge expediency for all of these reasons to really everybody work together um, so that we as the community can have um, healing. Um, thank you. Those requests do not fall on their fears. And I think we are 100% aligned um, with the goal being expediency. Um, I'm gonna stop right now. Uh, the five people that I see on my screen, you are gonna be allowed to speak. I do want to, if anyone else wants to speak, I ask that you raise your hand now so that we have a firm number of the number of people who are going to talk. Um, we do not want to, you know, hold everyone on the call um, for hours and hours. Um, so, um, but we are going to, I have five people now, um, six now, uh, seven. Um, so I'm going to move, uh, and I'm going to go along how they appear on my screen. So I apologize if they are out of order. Um, Miss Michelle Branch. Hello, hi, how are you? Doing well. Thank you for asking. Are you? Okay. Thank you. I'm good too. I have a question. I'm not. I don't. Not to get really off the subject. Um, first of all, I think that the board was wrong what they did to Mr. E, and I'm quite sure everyone on here feels the same way. Um, the other day when my son, who is in the fifth grade now, and he's leaving out the school, he's graduating. So you would think that maybe I wouldn't care, but I do care because I love Harlem Lake. I have a 17 year old that was in there from pre K. He's about to graduate high school now. So I have a, this is like a family and you guys are, you guys really broke up a family. And this is a real quick story. Uh, what's going on in Ukraine? And my son said, we were talking about it. And I go, you know, it's so unhappy and unfortunate that you have to wake up in the morning and your whole life change. And his exact words was like, oh yeah, like when they fired Mr. E. So I would like for somebody to explain to me, how can I explain this to my son? I have no answers for him of why Mr. E is not there. Somebody he's known from the time I was pregnant going, taking his brother to school to up until now, where is he at? What, how is he doing? How's his family? Why is he not here? Thank you for entrusting you know, both your kids. And I'm, I'm happy to hear that one's about to graduate high school. Um, unfortunately, like, like I mentioned, I can't delve into that right now, right? Um, and I'm gonna reiterate that for the folks on the phone. We, we're not at liberty to discuss that right now. Um, I think there is a plan to discuss that with the community going forward, but there are a couple of things that need to happen before we do that. Um, and you know, we've heard Ms. Marianne's uh, request and they align with ours around expediency. And we're gonna move this as quickly as we can. Um, love to talk to you going forward about how we can address that though. Um, Miss. Okay, thank you. No problem. Okay. Um, Ms. Faye, I, I don't wanna, part of my mispronunciation, as yeah, well. it's so gonna say. Yeah, I'm a, I am a alumni at Harlem Link Charter School, and um, I have been there. I I went there from kindergarten through fifth grade, and um, my brother graduated not too long ago, and is in middle school. And my current my sister right now is currently in the fourth grade, and um, yeah, I've it it just saddens me. Like it it really does break my heart and. I just kind of want to like dive straight into my questions um, because you mentioned earlier that 
the desires of the board conflict with the desires of the community. And I feel like you didn't really, you weren't really specific when it came to what the desires of the board are that conflict so much with the community. And I feel like when there's a lack of open communication, there is a lack of trust. I understand that there are certain things that you have to keep confidential. However, I also think it is not right to withhold information um, from the community on where the former leaders went wrong, um, because in order to proceed with the investigation or in order to make any progress with the investigation, I feel like we need to understand the root of the problem. And I think that's why a lot of people have expressed their concern when it comes to like how this has just like happened all of a sudden, like there's a lot of confusion. Um, and yeah, like I've, I've, like I said, I've been in the school since I was in, I, I went there from pre-K, I mean, not pre-K, like fifth kindergarten through fifth grade. And the school has been nothing but supportive to me, my brother and my sister. Um, like the quality of education has been amazing. Um, I live in the Bronx and I currently still live in the Bronx, but the reason why um, my mom wanted to put me in a school like Harlem Link is because of the good quality education that they provide to um, students. They they give like pe students of people, people of color like me a chance to really believe that they can be successful. Um, and so I feel like um, that opportunity is now um, almost being taken away in a sense because um, like you guys have decided to fire the former leaders. And again, there's no clarity on that. Um, and I'm also nervous for the future of the school as well. Currently my sister is there and she's confused as well because she sees the school as family. And so, um, yeah, I just feel like you guys weren't really specific when it came to the desires of the board and how that like conflicts with the community, because I feel like the community has been very transparent and um, you guys weren't really like specific on that. Uh, just to answer the one question, um, the new question that you asked, which was how was the desire of the board to conflict with the community? The community has made it very clear that they want Stephen Martin to be the leaders of the school. I, I, don't, I don't think we can question that, right? Um, however, it's not, that's, that's where we're in conflict. Uh, um, yeah, that's that's it. Um, but thank you for sharing that. Um, and you know we're going to keep that in mind and we'll, we'll move forward. Miss Mr. Brentro. Uh, yes. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, I'm uh, I'm a donor to the school and uh, I have visited the campus. I've been very impressed. Uh, I have the same question that the previous speaker had, uh, and I'm going to ask it again. And I would just tell you that I'm concerned uh, for the school. I'm worried about continuing to donate based upon what I've heard. It's very confusing to understand this, this divergence between what the community wants and what the board wants. And I understand at its core when you say that the community wants Steve and Margaret and the board does not but I'm confused about what the divergence is as far as the values of the board. How are those uh, at odds with what the community is articulating? And I, and I don't hear the community saying that they just want uh, two people. I hear them over and over articulating these same values that they, they want perpetuated. And I don't understand uh, where the board is coming from on this. Thank you. I don't think there, we're in misalignment with the desire for transparency. Uh, we are in misalignment on the timing and the process to get there. Um, we, 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 we gain nothing from hiding the ball, right? I think in a perfect world, our meeting would have ended 30 minutes ago and we'll be enjoying our Fridays. Um, and I think everyone can attest to that. Um, so we're not in misalignment. I think we're not in misalignment as to the values. I think we are in misalignment as to process at this point. Um, and I think that's an important distinction here. Um, and, I, and I appreciate your question for allowing me to, uh, to, to address that distinction. Um, Ms. Shani? Shani? Hi, yes. Um, I'm a parent of a fourth grade student. My child has been with the school since kindergarten. The staff is phenomenal. Um, I want to touch on a few things. The comment that you just made that 
the meeting would have been ended 30 minutes ago. The reason these meetings are so long is because there is no clarity. That's one. Number two, there, there's not clarity to the parents. You guys know the process. I understand we don't know, we can't know all the details right now, but we don't even know the process. And there's a lot of things that have happened that were unprofessional and unjust. So there's always gonna be confusion until we have an answer on that. The second thing is this needs to be expedited. And I understand that things do take time, but we are in April and the school year is almost over. We cannot go into next year with these issues. It's not gonna work. You, someone mentioned something about the enrollment numbers being a little low. How about being concerned with the parents and the students that are still there? Because if you're listening to everyone, there's concerns on all ends. So you're not gonna just be worried about enrollment. You need to be worried about the people that are thinking about leaving because we're uncomfortable. And my last comment is the minutes. Where are the minutes? You go on any other charter school's websites, the minutes are there. If you're gonna talk about transparency, you need to be transparent and give the minutes where they need to be available to the community. Thank you for that. I'll personally endeavor to get the minutes updated in the next week or so. Um, I wasn't in charge of preparing the December and January memory, but if I need to re-listen to the meeting to prepare, we'll do that. Um, as for expedience, we're gonna endeavor to do this as quick as we can. Um, just keep in mind <clears throat> that it's not, we're not the sole drivers of expedience. Um, we have two parties that are, you know, adversarial at this time, but I think both parties are committed to working towards that. Um, but once that process has drawn out and give you a little bit of insight into that process. Um, process did you just say adversarial? Yes, um, I did, because when, they're, when both sides have lawyers, that's inherently an adversarial relationship. Um, that's just the nature of the beast here. Um, however, well, could they be trying to protect themselves from wrongdoing? Uh, that's, Is that I, adversarial? I'm, I'm gonna try to address one question and then we can circle back to yours, Mr. Johnson. Um, with that being said, the process to um, being able to discuss, you know, with the level of transparency that everyone would like um, is that we will put some agreements in place between the parties that um, would ensure that uh, the school itself uh, cannot be in the future held liable for any claim that could possibly arise. Um, there are no real claims of the state, but um, this is due course for these type of situations. Um, once we've reached a settlement agreement between the parties involved, um, at that time, and we'll, you know, I think that agreement will uh, include parameters around transparency. I think, and this is to Steve and Margaret's credit, they're not willing to agree to anything that doesn't provide for a certain level of transparency. Um, and I think we're working towards that agreement. So that's the process. Um, as, as far as timing, uh, you know, I, I really hope that this is done in the next week or two. Um, that's, that's what I'm endeavoring towards. Um, and that's the time that I, that's the pace that I'm gonna be moving at. Uh, Mrs. Cohen. Hi, sorry. I just, um, I wanna thank the board. I wanna thank first and foremost, the parents. Um, I think the, the message I wanna get across to parents is that as a mom myself, I, I, I have a very unique position to be able to help students from kindergarten up through fourth grade at this time. And I just want parents, I'm speaking as a mom right now, to know that what I'm seeing in the classrooms, there is not a change of education for your children on a, a downslide. If anything, um, I, I need parents to understand and know that your children are very loved. I hear a lot of parents saying, myself included, I love you to students before they leave for the day. Um, I just, I feel very compelled as a mom to share that 
Your children are very well taken care of at Harlem Link. We are following the mission of what our founders set forth for our school. It's again, I mentioned in this in the last meeting, I've got a four hour round trip commute. It's why I do it. I believe in this school. I believe in what we do. Um, I personally am involved in, in litigation right now with an accident. I understand the frustrations that are involved in it. I want an answer yesterday. Um, I agree with Ms. Uh, Van Auken that you know this needs to be urgently taken care of. I, I feel like I have an open wound every single day, um, but as an adult, I'm able to, I don't want to say mask it because I'm not ignoring it, but turn it into more of an affection and love for your children because we do see your children more waking hours than a lot of parents do. And we've got their best interests in mind. Um, and I, I just feel, feel very compelled to say that we love your children and we are here following the mission of our founders. And like all the parents, we too are looking for answers and want them sooner than later because it, this we're running on, on the mission of our school and our energies and time and love and care and compassion are 100% focused on your children. And we appreciate your support as parents. Thank you for that, Mrs. Cohen. Uh, Rabia too, am I saying that correctly? R-A-B-I-A-T-O-U on your iPhone. Hi, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, I would like to know when exactly we can, we will be advised that the school will really be open for next year. Because at that, at this point, we don't even know if we keep gonna be returning to Harlem Link, if we should start looking for school somewhere else because we are confused. And we really miss, Mr. Margaret and Miss Mr. E and the way you guys treat them, it doesn't show a good example for us to show our kids. This is a school and we should give good example as a, a model for our kids. So the way you guys did it, I don't think that's the correct way to, to teach our kids. What do you guys want us want them to learn from that example. I don't think that's a good way to do it. If you have something that you're hiding, you should tell us. And as a parent, we will know how to talk to our children regarding you guys firing the, the principal. So if you can clarify that for us mm -hmm. and what should we do for next mm -hmm. year coming for the kids. Thank you. The school will 100% be open next year. Um, there's no, there, there isn't, and there hasn't ever been a plan for the school to close um, or to not exist for the foreseeable and unforeseeable future. Um, Dave Kirkman. No, thank you. Thank you. My name is Dave Kirpin. I am a 17-year uh, financial supporter of the school, and uh, thank you for having me today. I'm also a school board member in um, my local town, so I know a lot about school board uh, governance, and I, I really like some transparency around uh, the reasons for the termination of the school's co-founders. Um, there is absolutely no legal reason why the board cannot be transparent about those reasons, and I hope and expect that transparency will come as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you for your input. I'll deliver your comments on legality to our council, and we'll continue to act as instructed by council. Uh, last but certainly not least, uh, a second go around by Ms. Mota, uh, uh, even though the name looks a little different this time, but Ms. Mota Rodriguez. I'm sorry about that. I'm not sure why it looks um, different. Um, I just want to comment on something that you said um, previously um, regarding parents being coerced or anything. Um, it is completely offended to us. Uh, well, at least to me particularly. I'm a professional. I work in the school system and I have been working 
for over 20 years with, with children um, that, that it may be seen that we are being coerced just because we are advocating and talking on behalf of our children. Um, it may seem that we are being preferential or, or talking on behalf of staff, Mr. E or whoever, you know, was um, fire or even the school principals, the co-principals and teachers and anyone involved in the school, just because we're advocating for our kids does not mean that we're being coerced by any staff member of the school. We're advocating and our main goal, and I speak for myself and my sister, who is one of the teachers, we are speaking on behalf of our children. We want the best for our children. So I found it and I feel totally offended by the questioning of whether parents are being coerced to talk on behalf of other staff member when we just want the best for our children. Um, I'm pretty sure there are many other professionals, many really hard workers here um, who take the time to be in this meeting for so many hours. I'm in my computer working right now, still working uh, for my, my other two jobs that I have and my business that I have, but I still make the time to be part of this. I still make the time to make sure that I'm listening to the concerns that I'm listening to the not so answers that we're expecting to have um, and, and everyone else in this community. So I find it very kind of offended, very offended that anyone is saying that we are being coerced as parents to speak on behalf of others when we are really here just speaking on behalf of our children, because that's what it's important to us. I believe that that's the main importance of the teachers, the staff at Harlem Link, the future of our children. So I think um, maybe using or paraphrasing the words that it's being told to the parents could really help with the communication. Communicating with parents is like a very, very, and I'm in social work. I work with children with developmental disabilities. I think the language is very important that we use so that parents don't feel either offended, don't take offense like I just did with regards to telling us or, or guessing or trying to say that we are being told what to do or what to say. So that's very highly offended. So I think the language that the board uses when addressing parents needs to be really revised and changed when addressing them. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I, I certainly wasn't suggesting that you were being coerced. I was responding because someone else had mentioned that they heard that they were being coerced. Um, and I just wanted to get to the bottom of where that came from. And I'm, so if that, and I'm sorry, to speak if you came again. in from me, I want to apologize on behalf of myself. If that's what came across, that certainly wasn't my intention. Um, okay. Thank you. I just want to say it, it was that that it was her for more than one time and, and that it was, you know, yeah, taken you, you, a like of that. So thank you for that. That they heard it. And I just wanted to respond because that was a common theme. Um, so last but certainly not least, um, before ending this meeting, Mr. Johnson, second time around. I just, I just have a question, bro. Just a question. Just could you please for me, just just for me, help help me feel a little bit better tonight. Please tell us what uh, Harlem Link's core values are right now. Oh shit! Ooh, I got a, a quiz. I just no, it's not a quiz, bro. I don't it's not a quiz. My, my, my children's my children's future is far more important mm -hmm. than a quiz. Mm -hmm. This is That's a very legitimate is. question. It's I don't a very legitimate question. So part of my I think, ignorance. I think you need to get on board then, brother, if you're gonna do something for our village. Because I don't because I don't you gotta at least know the values of the village. You got it. I will I will make sure to know that and make sure that you when we speak, we'll I'll make sure to have that memorized. Get it in your soul, brother, because Harlem Link is the soul of the people. Absolutely. It's not the building. Absolutely, it's not. It's not. The soul and the heart of the Absolutely. people. Have you listened to these people? Did you I, I, hear I, trust the tears me, I have. in their voice? Did you I, hear the I tears have. in their voice? Uh -huh. 
A hundred percent. If I you don't even know the values of the community, how can you help us? Because how can you make it better? Them. How can you write the ship? Because I don't know them you verbatim should have right now. The, the values, the values. Yes, you should. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Very Your point is well taken, and I will uh, keep that in uh, the back of my mind. And I'll make sure to know that when we speak. And keep I'm it sure in front we will of your speaking. mind, brother. Get it in your soul. Absolutely. That's what all I'm, wholeheartedly, and I'll I'm sorry, it. this is very disrespectful and very unprofessional for you to, to just keep interrupting him. Like, very, oh my God, very unprofessional from you. I, I, I apologize. Wow. If that's how you feel. And, it, it's just, it, it, it's blowing mm -hmm. my mind right away to you for you to be interrupting a parent who is concerned, who's asking you uh, uh, just a question. And wow. I'm, I'm think, speechless uh, to say Mr. that. Mr. Johnson, if you feel that I was disrespectful to you, um, I'm not sure if you do. Sincerely uh, apologize. We've talked many a time, and, and, and I think our discourse have taken this, this tone before, so I didn't think it was disrespectful. Um, I hope that I certainly wasn't conveying that and it wasn't coming across um, that way to you um, and certainly to the rest of the parents on this uh, call. So, the whole um, process is coming across as disrespectful to the parents, to the village, to mm -hmm. the people. The whole that, process I, I, is coming across very mm -hmm. disrespectful. I, I got a pretty thick skin, you know. I, I like you big football guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that, Mr. Johnson, I'm sure we'll be in touch, but I, uh, I motion to adjourn this meeting. Um, I hope to hear from you guys over the, the, until the next meeting. I'm sure we'll be in touch. Um, we do plan to have a couple more potential board members in front of you guys. Um, and with that, is there a second? Second. With that, um, the motion passes and this meeting is adjourned. Look out for board meeting minutes um, for the last few months over the next few weeks. Um, so thank you. Be safe, have everyone. Have a good night. Good night.